Hello everyone, my name is James. Welcome to King's Fine Woodworking. Today I'm going to talk about parallel clamps and how to keep them clean and running smooth. Uh, parallel clamps are probably the best clamp that you can have in the wood shop. They have a very deep clamping surface area. They provide tremendous pressure and even under load, the clamping surfaces maintain parallel to each other. But in order for them to work well and you to get enjoyment out of using them, they really have to stay clean. Some time ago I decided to do a video about how to clean and maintain our clamps and so I decided not to clean them for a couple of glue ups so that I have, have them in a little bit of a messy situation to show you uh, what it takes to clean them and then we sort of got lazy and I think 10 or 15 or even maybe 20 glue ups have gone by since then and so they're really quite a mess. So this is really a good opportunity for me to show you how to bring these things back to new. You can see how they barely work. They, they won't even open and close anymore because so many uh, glue drips have fallen down onto the metal bar of the clamps. Even this one that looks relatively clean, it's extremely hard to open and close. These things are no fun when it works like this. Uh, it's twice as much work to do and you really don't get as much clamping pressure because it's just hard to move everything. I'm going to show you the easiest way to get these things clean and the best solvents to use as well. I have a wide variety of solvents in my shop and I'm going to show those to you. Uh, these are things that you should have in any woodworking shop probably. They're for various uses and these are an increasing strength, solvent strength from left to right. Starting with denatured alcohol, mineral spirits, turpentine, then acetone. Next would be methyl ethyl ketone, xylene, and finally toluene which is the strongest solvent available. Using any of these, you really need nitrile gloves for safety, especially the stronger solvents. These are dried PVA glue chips. Uh, you need a respirator for some of these solvents, uh, safety glasses for sure, uh, an old set of chisels, and some shop rags. So what I did a long time ago is I took a sample of each of these solvents and I put them into glass containers. If, uh, if you ever do anything like this where you're running a test to see what might dissolve what, you're going to need to use glass. These are Pyrex glass containers. Uh, they're, not, they're kind of impervious to these solvents. You wouldn't want to put uh, acetone or xylene or toluene in some different plastics, plastic containers, because they'll just dissolve the containers. Uh, so anyway, we put a sample of these in each of these different containers and we're going to insert some glue chips in there and see what happens to them. We are doing all of this experimentation on top of a silicone bench mat, which is impervious to all of these solvents. And that way, if there's any spillover, I'm going to protect the finish on top of my assembly table. Next, my daughter Sai is going to take some of these dried tight bond glue chips and put them in the containers and we're going to see what dissolves. Uh, this stuff is actually tight bond 3, which is a PVA, polyvinyl acetate glue. Uh, after touching the solvent, we're just going to wipe off the excess solvent onto a wet washcloth. That way I'm not going to carry any solvent from one container over into the next. She's just going to make sure that we get these things uh, fully wet by the solvent and then we're going to let them sit in the solvent for about five minutes or so and see if we get any sort of a reaction. One thing that became pretty apparent after waiting five minutes was that upon close inspection none of these dissolved in the solvents. Which means PVA is actually a pretty good glue. But that's not really a big deal. And now let's see if there was actually any sort of a reaction between the solvent uh, or any of these solvents and the PVA itself. I'm just going to go ahead and start with the acetone here. I happen to know that this is uh, one of the solvents that works, uh, that does react a little bit with the PVA glue, and we'll take a look at what this has done to it. We can see that the piece is much softer, and with my fingernail, I can actually tear the piece apart. It's pretty easy to pull it apart, to scrape it apart, uh, because there has been some sort of a chemical reaction between the acetone and the PVA. It's changed the consistency of the PVA into a softer, more rubber-like texture, which is actually going to be pretty easy to get that off of the bars of the clamp. And if we look at a piece of PVA that has been untouched, 
we can see that this thing is still rock hard. There's no change in this. I can't put a dent in it. It doesn't bend. It's not flexible at all. Next, I'm going to move over to the MEK, the methyl ethyl ketone, and we'll see that the same thing happened here. The PVA glue became very soft, very pliable, and was pretty easy to tear. I'm going to wipe the excess of it off here. I've got a wet rag that's going to kind of pull most of the solvent off before I handle this piece. Uh, otherwise, it really dries out your skin. But yeah, it's very soft, very pliable. I could tear it with my fingernail, and that's going to make it you know, fairly easy to get off of the clamp as well. As it turns out, none of the other solvents attacked the PVA glue, just the acetone and the MEK. And so we're going to take a look at this clamp here, and we see that we've just got glue embedded in the grooves. Uh, it's all over the place. So we've got thicker and thinner pieces. And so the best thing to do is to uh, disassemble the clamp a little bit. We're going to pull off the face uh, from the, t the clamping surface, the face, the protective face from it. And we're going to just try to clean all of the surfaces. And we're going to pull the clamp apart. I'm going to pull this stop out, and we're going to take the, uh, the clamping uh, body off of the bottom end of it as well so I can get down to the bar and get the bar cleaned properly. I'm noticing even the threads in here aren't moving very smoothly because there's dirt in there, might be a little bit of glue in there, and we're going to make sure we clean that up as well. So we notice the solvent is actually slow to take action. So we don't really want to try to clean these clamps 100% with solvent. That's going to take too long. So the best thing to do is to get an older chisel. And I've actually put a link to some cheaper chisels, uh, just $10 chisels, uh, down in the description below that will work really good for this job. And you can take with these things and probably get 90, 95% of the glue off pretty quickly and easily, maybe in about five minutes. And then the solvent isn't going to have that much work to do to get rid of the remainder. And I'm not putting very much pressure on these ridges here. I want to make sure I don't gouge them or cut them out. But they are pretty hardened steel, uh, the clamp is. So I've never really been able to scrape or wear these down anyway. But I'm just kind of lightly going over it in order to scrape the excess glue off the top. We use the solvent to get the remainder of it out in between the grooves. Next, I like to go to the wire brush. I can use either a stainless steel brush, which is a little tougher, or I can use a brass brush. And both of those will help clean off most of the rest of the small flakes that are on there. We're not trying to get this clamp down to 100%. That's too much work. We're just trying to get the bulk of the glue off here. So the next step is pretty important here. Uh, you remember I put these solvents in order of increasing strength. And acetone is weaker than MEK, but it took the made the glue just as soft as the MEK did. So you always want to use the weakest solvent you can to do the job because that's the safest. Chemically speaking, the more reactive a solvent is, the more dangerous a solvent is. Uh, whether it be to your skin or your respiratory system, your eyes if you accident, accidentally get splashed or anything. The stronger the solvent is, the more dangerous it is. So always use the weakest solvent you can that works and does the job. So maybe you can see what I'm doing is I've got the solvent soaked on my rag and I'm continually keeping the metal of the clamp wet. And I'm using the wire brush to scrub the glue. And we just kind of go over this again and again. I think I probably spent five or six minutes total uh, wetting the surface of the clamp down and scrubbing with the wire brush. And after that time, the surface of the metal came relatively clean, probably 95 to 98% clean. I really like using these terry cloth rags in the shop. It's basically a super cheap washcloth. And I've also put a link to these in the description below. I think I pay about a buck a piece for these things. And I wait, uh, I get 20 or 30 of them at a time and I, you know, wait till they're dirty and then I go and wash them. And they really last a long time. But the terry cloth washcloths work great for most of the, the shop cleanup activities. And that's really about it. I've got the bar perfectly clean in the sense that there are no bumps or no glue protrusions. Some staining is going to happen, but the bar is perfectly clean and smooth at this point. Next, you'll notice I'm jumping all the way down in solvent strength to denatured alcohol. I've got a clean uh, rag here, clean cloth, and I'm going to use this to clean the heads, the plastic heads. Uh, acetone is very aggressive, and it tends to attack plastics. I actually think these Bessie heads are made of a very durable plastic, so it's probably not a problem. But just to be safe, 
I like to clean all plastics with alcohol uh, rather than acetone. That's, that's a good rule of thumb for the shop. Since acetone dissolves plastics, don't use it to clean plastics. So that's why I'm using the denatured alcohol here. And we'll get this thing nice and clean, get the extra glue scraped off of it. And we can lubricate this and it'll be done. I'd like to take a minute to say thank you to everybody who watches our videos. And if you are not already a subscriber, if you could just hit that subscribe button down below, you won't miss any of our videos. We've got quite a few videos coming out this spring, a lot of really interesting builds, and I think you're going to like it. Thank you. Alrighty, with the clamping head done, we are going to jump back to the bar. We've got to put something on this bar so the glue doesn't stick to it in the future. And ideally, so this is paste wax. Ideally, you would put paste wax on your clamps when you first buy them. And every other time or so when you glue, do a glue up, if you put a little bit of paste wax on, you'll never have glue sticking to your bar. So I let mine go purposely so I can make the video. But you don't have to ever encounter that scenario if you can just keep wax on your bars. All paste wax works. So this one's made by Howard's. And uh, I also like paste wax min wax, which is what I use probably a little bit more frequently. But this was what was available when I was at the store last night, and so this is what I picked up. All right, so once I get it on the bar, I'm going to let that bar set, let the, the wax dry on there for a minute, and I'm going to turn my attention to the clamping head. This is beeswax. I'm going to run a little bit of beeswax into the uh, threads on the clamping head. This is going to make it run a little bit smoother. This is just one of two things that I'm going to put here, but wait till we're all done, and you'll see how nicely this works. Now I also need to get some lubrication in the slot on the clamp head where the bar is going to ride. And I don't want to use oil because I don't want to ever stain my wood. So WD-40 makes a silicone lubricant which works fantastic. It stays bonded to the metal nicely and allows this bar to travel really smoothly for a long period of time. So I'll put a little bit of this in both sides of the clamp head. And this stuff is actually pretty cheap. I think it's like five bucks or so for a can, and a can lasts me a year or two. So it's a pretty good investment for a lot of things in your shop that need lubrication. All right, now we're, now we're going to get rid of the excess wax. So I moved to a dry terry cloth, and I'm just going to kind of buff off the excess, excess wax on the bar here. And it's really that easy. I think I have about 12 minutes uh, invested into the cleaning of this clamp, and we're going to put it back together and see how it goes. That is a remarkable difference over what it was just uh, 10 or 15 minutes ago. In fact, after doing this to old clamps, you'll find that the, if you follow this same procedure, these clamps actually move considerably smoother and faster and easier than they do when they're brand new. It also really makes them much more of a delight to use and you don't mind reaching for clamps when they're easy to use. When they're tough to use, sometimes you reach for a cheaper clamp in the shop and that's really not what you should be doing. All right, just one final thing that I mentioned a minute ago. Uh, after putting the beeswax on those threads and reassembling the clamp I like to put just a little bit of silicone spray over the top of the beeswax. This makes the threads on here just move super smooth. There's almost zero friction on the threads now and that really enables you to get a super tight clamping grip with minimal effort. So if you're like me and you've got hundreds or even thousands of dollars invested into clamps especially parallel clamps Ideally, you're really going to want to keep them in top working order, and this is the best way to do it. And I have a link to everything I used in today's video in the description below in case you need any of it. And that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching.